Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher, Director of Product Optimization here at Sweetwater Sound. And today we're going to have some fun. We're going to analyze and create uh, some of the most famous classic rock synth sounds. And uh, I'll be using the Novation Peak synthesizer because uh, it is a great classic synthesizer. And uh, I'll be controlling it with the Impulse 61 keyboard controller. And um, so basically we're going to just listen to these sounds, analyze them, figure out what they're doing, and then build them. And I'll show you how to play them. Uh, the reason I like classic rock sounds is the era when these were made in the 70s, there were only so many tools available to synthesis. I mean, you had oscillators, filters, amplifiers, LFOs, envelopes, and a keyboard, and some delay and some reverb. Um, and so it's very easy to break those sounds down into how they were made, and uh, we'll just get right into it. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is Fly Like an Eagle by Steve Miller. Um, it's basically just an oscillator going into a delay and, and walking up the keyboard. So after listening to it, um, decided to go with a square wave. But then use a low pass filter to kind of roll off the highs. And, and then it's pretty much all about just getting the delay time right. Um, and what you do is you listen to the album and you listen to the echoes. You hit a key and you, you try to get the delay time at the same time and the delay goes pretty long in this so you have lots of repeats a lot of feedback and, um, and and that's pretty much it I mean all I have is a filter down a little bit and the envelopes for both filter and uh, amplitude I have uh, the sustain levels all the way up instant attack instant release uh, that's pretty straightforward and I got my delay and then it's just a matter of white keys And the next one is going to be Carnival 9 uh, by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. It's just a little more difficult. Uh, basically, we're starting with some sawtooth waves. A couple more, just slightly detuned to thicken it up a little bit. And the key thing on this is that you've got a low-pass filter with a lot of resonance that's being modulated by a random LFO so that the filter is jumping all around to random places. And with the resonance turned up high, boom, you got the sound. So first I get my filter turned down a little bit. So it's about the lowest I'd want it to get. <clears throat> and then um, I have my LFO2 set to sample and hold, which is a random value. In fact, you can even see it doing random there on a the little light. And, um, and I set the speed of that. I just listened to the album of how fast the boops and bleeps are going, and I set the rate to that. And I start adding LFO1 depth to the filter. Now it's starting to get the right sound, but something's missing, and what's missing is resonance. So I start turning up resonance in the filter. I think I hit the right note, A flat. And then it's just a matter of adding a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay, a little bit of chorus, and just getting the filter just right so it's not closing too much, not opening too much. And there you go. Okay, the next one we're going to do is uh, the sound effect from Frankenstein by the Edgar Winter Group. And it's a little more complicated because it has multiple uh, control sources feeding a filter. And it's the two of them interacting. And so basically what it is is an envelope working on the filter cutoff and an LFO working on the filter cutoff. And the two of them happening at the same time. So first we start with some noise. I have all my oscillators turned off and I turn up no white noise. And I have the longest release possible on my envelopes for both amplitude and filter. So they both take a long time to fall after you let go of the key. And so now I have some noise like this. So I'm gonna turn up the white noise and I'm running that through a bandpass filter. 
and I'm going to turn the resonance up, give it some more bite. And now I'm going to add envelope to the filter. So that it does this after I hit the key. So that's one of the two things feeding that filter. The next is an LFO. I'm going to put the envelope back and now just turn up the LFO. And neither of them are quite right, but when you do them both at the same time, you get the sound. So here's the next version. And if you want, you can manually control the filter as well. Either put that on a controller, on a Roland, you can put it on a D-beam, you can put it on a foot controller, or you can just grab the filter knob and turn it. And then the last thing, of course, is turning up some delay, very important, and turning up some reverb, and maybe even a little bit of chorus, and then you're done. Okay, the next sound is a little more complicated. Uh, this is the keyboard part from Life's Been Good to Me So Far by Joe Walsh. And this one's kind of interesting if you don't know the trick. Uh, it's hard to reproduce. And the trick is that the oscillators don't track the keyboard, only the filter tracks the keyboard. And that's what makes it kind of unusual in that you hear like this low A note always hitting, and yet you're hearing the harmonics play the little melody. And so on the Novation Peak, the way you do that is you go into the oscillator page and there's a parameter called fixed note. And I have that set to A0. So no matter what note I play, I only get A0. And that's very convenient for that. And as you can hear, there's a little bit of phasing because I have two oscillators. And both of them have their fixed note set to A0. Then it's just a matter of setting up your filter. So the trick is you get a low pass filter, four pole or 24 dB per octave. And you want the filter to exactly track the keyboard as if it was playing notes. And the way you do that is you set key tracking to 100%. And then you just need to find the filter to match the note. So I'm gonna change the filter cutoff until I hear the note I'm looking for, and I'm also going to turn up the resonance because if I don't, it'll sound like this, which is not good enough. So I turn the resonance up pretty high, and now I'm going to go and match the note. And so you can hear that when I'm playing A, I'm hearing the low note A ringing and an octave or so up. Uh, from that is where the filter's at. And now the filter tracks the keyboard. And that's pretty much it. Now I just add some chorus, I add some delay, I add some reverb, and what you get is this. And the last one we're going to do, the most complicated and certainly the most requested sound we ever get of how did we do it, is Won't Get Fooled Again by The Who. And what Pete Townsend did was play a Lowry organ into his ARP synthesizer. And so he used the organ as the oscillators and then used the filter and the amp from the synth to create that amazing sound. Um, but it's actually a lot simpler than it would seem to be. And what it is, is a square wave LFO modulating the volume so that the volume is turning on and off and on and off very sharply and distinctly. And then much slower is a triangle LFO opening and closing a resonant low pass filter. And that's it. And you add a little reverb delay and chorus and, and you're good to go. Now, if your synth uh, only has pure geometric waveforms, sine, triangle, stuff like that, um, 
but you have at least two or three oscillators, you want to try and create an organ sound using those. Uh, if you have three oscillators, I would do uh, like a 16 foot and eight foot an octave above it, and then go another octave, but a perfect fifth above that and mix and match until you get something that sounds like an organ sound. And uh, so on this one though, on the Novation Peak, uh, they have a thing called more which you can get waveforms other than your standard geometric waves. And I've chosen organ, which makes my life a lot easier. But turn that up. Just a straight organ sound. And I've doubled that just to get a little more thickness. And I got a little distortion going. Um, but that's, that's pretty much the sound that I'm going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn all the volumes off because I don't want it to make sound half of the time. The other half, when the square wave is modulating it, I want it to go up full, so I make the depth full. The source is LFO1, which as you can see is set to a square wave, and it's going at the speed of pulsing. I just listened to the album and turned it till I got the pulsing right. Um, and it's, it's a LFO plus and minus. In other words, it's going above zero and negatively below zero. That really helps push the volume open and then slam it shut. And so when I do that to all three oscillators, which I'm going to do that to two and to three, so now I should have a nice pulsing sound. And it's important, uh, if you have the ability to, to set your LFO to common. And what that does is make all of the notes pulse at the same time, instead of if you played the notes at different times, they'd all be going at their own times, which isn't good. You need it all together. Okay. Now, the next most important part is a low-pass filter sweeping through all this. So, I got my low-pass filter set up, a 24 dB, four-pole low-pass filter. And you can hear I've got the resonance turned up pretty high. That's an important part so that you hear it sweep through all the harmonics. Now, instead of turning it by hand, though, I'm going to take my second LFO, which you can see is going very slowly on a triangle wave. It's just going to go up and down and up and down. And again, I just listened to the album, kind of timed how long it took to get from full brightness back to dark, back up to full brightness. And I turn the LFO speed until it was the same. And now I'm going to adjust the LFO depth. Uh, I have filter frequency uh, as a destination in my modulation matrix. And this time it's LFO2, but LFO2 plus only, not minus, because I don't want the filter to get any darker than the lowest I set it. I only want it to get brighter than the lowest I set it. So by having positive only lets me do that. So the first thing I do is set the frequency of the filter to the lowest I want it to go. That's about right. And then I can now set the LFO depth to the brightest I want it to go. And you'll know you've gone too far if it opens up and then just seems like it stays open for a really long time. You've done what I've called pinning. You've gone all the way to the max and it's just stuck there. So you want to be very careful with your frequency and your LFO depth. Now you turn up some distortion. You turn up some overdrive just to give it some of that rock and roll. And then some chorus to taste some delay and some reverb and you are there So I hope that gave you a little more information on the creation of classic rock sounds and a little more information about the new Novation Peak. I'm also using the Novation Impulse Controller. If you have any questions about these or any other products, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Once again, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.